runaway throttle repair Friday. No, bring it in next Friday. Yeah, next Friday. Your Fordson tractor? That's what I said, Friday. All right, we'll take care of your case of the runaway throttle. Here we are with the 1926 Fordson, and here's the problem. Throttle control, located conveniently under the steering wheel, is hooked up through a couple different linkages, down here, and it goes over to the mixing chamber, and as you can see, as we move the throttle back and forth, it adjusts the mixing chamber to give more control to the motor. But the problem is, as the motor is running, there's so much vibration and no resistance that the throttle gradually opens up causing the runaway throttle. So how was this fixed or not fixed? Very high-tech farmers bailing wire to set it and forget it. Here we are at the 1924 Fordson, and the same condition presents itself. High-tech farmer's bailing wire to hold the throttle in place, and the same type of setup. Linkage is controlled down here. Goes over to the Zenith carburetor. You can see this one uh, working a little bit better than on the other one, but it's the same principle, and as the motor runs, the throttle will gradually open up on its own. There's not enough resistance to hold it in place. So what is the fix? The fix is not bailing wire. It's actually a friction disc that fits in behind this cup and we will dismantle, reassemble with the correct parts, cross our fingers and see if it works. Came. Junk, bill, junk, bill, bill, junk, more junk, another bill, more junk. <gasps> it came! It finally came! It's a major award! Oh, here it is. Let's get the case of the runaway throttle fixed. All right, when I made my order, I ordered four of these friction discs, not because I needed four, but I know I need at least two, and then I'll have two backups in case we have any problems along the way, and I won't have to wait for another order and pay for a ton of shipping. Uh, these discs were about $4.95 a piece, and shipping came to just under $20, so, uh, yeah, you see what it is, and almost $20 shipping a couple states away. But anyways, uh, the parts are available, and they are obviously handmade. Um, some of them are a little more rough than others. Um, well, I'll just let that speak for itself. It is what it is, and hopefully this will get us back in business to correct the runaway throttle issue. Before we start dismantling both of these, just want to show you this disc fits right inside this cup. And on the other side of the disc, there's a stamped metal wing, uh, kind of looks like a set of bat wings almost and that is part of the linkage that opens and closes the mechanism for the throttle and basically that metal wing piece uh, is held with some resistance with this friction disc and the spring also adds some resistance so that the throttle doesn't just open wide like it has been. 
So we'll start tearing these apart on both tractors. I know we're gonna have some challenges on this one in particular, because instead of reassembling with uh, pins, looks like they either epoxied or welded this part of the linkage on. So it's gonna be a challenge. I uh, got some ideas for a workaround, so we'll see what happens. And again, this is on the 1926, very similar setup. Um, a lot cleaner than the 1924, but this one should be a little bit easier to disassemble because it um, was not cobbled together with any type of welding or anything, but we will find out. And again, this disc is gonna set right inside of that cup to keep pressure. So hang tight and we'll see what happens next. On the 1924 Fordson, we're gonna start by removing this cotter pin. It's holding tension against this spring. Now the tension's been relieved from the spring. I'm gonna use a 7 16 nut driver to remove nut on the back side of this cap. And there's also a washer on here. Pull this back and you can see what is left is just a small piece of the original friction disc. So this is very oily, it's deteriorated. We're gonna clean this out and see what we can do with installing the new friction disc. All right, we've lightly cleaned the inside of this cap out and you can see that this friction disc needs to set in the bottom of this cap, but the problems that present themselves are the control piece for the carburetor is peened onto the end of the throttle control shaft, and on this model, someone has welded part of the linkage to the throttle control shaft, so our only options are to try and cut this off and clean it and try and salvage what's here or make a modification to this disc and see if we can cut it in such a way to fit it around the throttle control rod. So we'll see what we can do. All right, so we obviously don't wanna create even more work than is already created itself. So what I've done is taken a pair of scissors and I cut this friction disc so that we have uh, an opening try and put it in around this throttle control rod. So bear with me as I try and get this in here without cracking it in half. So the other fight that we have is one of the three of these holes is larger than the other and now I've covered it up but there is a pin that's pressed into the back side of this cap. So we have to get everything lined up. There we go. Uh, hopefully the camera picks this up. We can see this pin that is pressed in here and then try and slide this up all right so the only problem we have is where we've used the scissors to cut this disc it's obviously going to create a lot of wear so it's a good thing we got extras, but the next thing we'll start to reassemble this. All right, we have the friction disc in here, and now we're going to try and get this cap reassembled back onto the carburetor. So the stud on the carburetor is going to go through the friction disc and then match up with the cap. All right, so 
So that is back in place. I'm going to put our washer and nut back on. And then we're going to put this cotter key back in place to hold tension on this spring. Get the nut tightened back down. Try. Okay, so if Mr. Cameraman look in here where the throttle linkage is at, and I can tell you right away that there is a considerable amount of tension on that bat wing uh, piece that is stamped on to the rear of the throttle control rod. So, uh, a couple things of note the Zenith carburetor, they did cut out a section of this cap so that you can adjust the screw underneath of it. It was made that way. It's not a um, fix that somebody created. And we'll see on the 1926 Fordson how that adjustment screw is encapsulated by the cap. And what we've learned from this repair is there should be no lubrication at all underneath of this cap so that the friction disc will do, it, do its job. And if we get a close up, this is all that was left of the original friction disc. And you can see that it's uh, kind of soaked with oil. And we did that uh, early on when we were trying to get everything loosened up. So lesson learned, and now we'll know what we need to do on the next one and how to prevent this disc from wearing out prematurely and not use any lubrication. All right, here we are with the 1926 Fordson in the Holley 295 vaporizer, and it's gonna be the same steps. We're gonna use our 7 16 nut driver to remove the nut and lock washer that secure this cover onto the mixing chamber. washer set those aside and if you notice this has a completely different setup with the spring and the spring uh, retainer so we're going to see if we can get this worked back it's going to be a little bit tighter with that spring so what we're going to do is take a break while I get this loosened up enough to access the parts that we need to get into. All right, so just needed a little extra grip to slide this back. And there's a lot less play with this control rod than the previous one that we worked on. And you can also see that we don't have a lot of room to work on this one just because of the way the uh, spring is set up. It's far superior, but it's also a lot stronger. So we're gonna clean up the inside of this, same thing, a little bit of carb cleaner, or in our case, we just used a little bit of uh, starting fluid. Clean that up, and we'll get this one uh, wiped out, dried, and then we'll come up with our workaround to get that friction disc, same disc, um, fitted for the inside of this one. All right, we've modified this friction disc by cutting it just like we did on the previous one. However, there is so much tension on this spring for the throttle control rod that we don't have as much room to work. And so what we've done is created some space by using a pair of vice grips to hold the throttle control rod tight against the dashboard assembly and pushing it forward just enough using this cap to press against the fuel mixing chamber just to create enough space to try and work this friction disc in and get it underneath of this clip. And again, that clip is pressed onto the end of the throttle uh, control rod. So I'm gonna go off camera for a few moments, work this friction disc in underneath, 
and hopefully when we come back we'll have a favorable report. All right, a couple issues that developed while we were trying to get the friction disc on this Holley 295. The little bat wing that's pressed on to the end of the throttle control rod is a lot thicker than the one that's used on the other Fordson that has the Zenith carburetor. The other issue that we had is the retention spring on the back side of this cap you can see is a lot more robust and has a more permanent uh, fixture securing it. So it was very difficult to create any space behind this cap and what we ended up doing is cutting the friction disc in half and working it in from the left and right sides to get it in behind that uh, piece that's secured to the throttle control rod. So we're gonna get this linkage put back in. So we have that on there and then we'll get our lock washer and nut and re-secure this. So while I'm tightening this down, what's the full proper way of going about this? Full proper way would be uh, total removal of this uh, throttle linkage and to do that it would entail pressing out the pin on this part of the link linkage that connects to the throttle control that's underneath of the steering wheel. So we've tightened this back up. Let's give it a try. Uh, looks like we need to tighten it down just a little bit more. And then when we return, we'll give it another test. We have the throttle linkage reassembled. The cap is securely in place. I'll give the throttle control a little test. So as I rotate the throttle, uh, you can see that it's opening. I don't know if the camera can pick it up inside of that cap. But you can see that little bat wing uh, piece rotating back and forth as I open and close the throttle. Um, having to cut that throttle uh, friction disc in, uh, in half to fit it around, I'm not too pleased with that and uh, the question is, did that solve the problem? It appears on this one it solved the problem. However, I do not like the fact that we had to cut this one in half or that we had to cut the other one uh, to fit it around, but that was the, the quick repair. We have two extras we can experiment with down the road, but for right now, uh, this has significantly increased the drag on the throttle. So what we'll do later on is we'll fire up each one of these engines and we'll give it a test to see if our work has paid off. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps you out with your project.